four. The fainting, faking, and then uh, timing. So faints, everybody should know that by now. It's just that jerky motion, okay? Before you do something else. So faints can be used um, offensively and defensively. And uh, offensively, obviously you can turn it into a fake. So let's say if I throw my faint jab, throw my faint jab up, maybe the person starts carrying this way too much down. Now a fake, go for the hook, okay? So that's a faint being turned into a hook. Second thing defensively, and, uh, and uh, very importantly, um, it can be used, you know, like I was saying defensively, when you're in trouble, either, either if you're hurt, or if you need to buy yourself some time when you're tired, okay? You can start using feints because they break up the uh, opponent's rhythm, timing, and they kind of slow things down uh, until you can recuperate. So I, I, can't, I can't tell you guys how many times I've been in a fight where I've gotten hit in the liver. And if anybody's gotten hit in the liver, they know how that feels, okay? It just kind of shuts you down. You can't really breathe for the next 15 seconds, I would say. So you need, you need to figure out a way you know, you're not gonna just drop down and quit and then not the other guys guys winning because you can still think, okay? So it's just pain and it's just mental. You have to prepare yourself for that. So as soon as I get hit, the first thing I start doing is I start fainting, fainting. Because I'm trying to keep the person away from me as much as, as long as possible until that 15 seconds goes by, then I can start breathing again. Because throughout that time, I can't breathe. So I'm trying to do the least amount of work <clears throat> Uh, that's gonna give me uh, like a, a good benefit. So fainting, I mean, that doesn't really take too much out of your uh, system, okay? I'm not gonna start like doing double kicks on the person to try to keep them away because I can't breathe at that point. So I have to do something that's gonna be a low energy but high fit, a high, uh, high, high uh, outcome, okay? Um, so fainting is one of the ways that I do that, okay? Um, and then another thing, <clears throat> It's used to see what what the opponent is thinking. So, like I was saying before, if you uh, if you do a feint and the person has something that's like predetermined in their in their mind how they're gonna react, then you already know. Okay, now you know what this guy is gonna gonna be doing. You know their general general rhythm, and that's one of the most important things in that first first round, maybe even second round. You don't really that's when the that's when your opponent is gonna be most dangerous because you don't really know what they're about. You don't know their style. You don't know their timing. Um, second thing is the fakes, okay? So fakes, obviously, like I was saying, um, uh, you know, it can be done from feints or you can just set up, a, a, set up your regular fake. Now fakes are gonna work on anybody. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're Sanchai, if you're the best fighter in the world, fakes are something that you cannot prepare for, okay? That's the whole point of, of, of what a fake is. As long as you sell it correctly, and that's the most important thing. So you have to do everything the same way up until that, uh, uh, the same way that you would do your regular te technique up until that midway point. Quarterway or midway point, then you stop, you change, and then you do something else. So it's important for you guys not to uh, finish your technique. It's all about indicating, but not finishing. You indicate, change, then you finish something else. So can I borrow you real quick? So if this is my, if this is my natural right kick, right? This is how I kick. Let me let me go this way so everybody can see my body position. Okay, this is my regular kick. Regular kick. Now I'm gonna slow it down. This is what I do when I do my regular kick. You see that with my arms? I go this way, and then I end this way, okay? So I have to do everything the same way up until that quarterway point or midway point, then I change, okay? So if my regular kick is like this, I can't do a kick like this and expect them to buy or, or go for that fake. It's not gonna work and I see that often because people start overthinking it. Instead, you have to almost like trick yourself and say to yourself, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this kick 100%, fake, boom, and then you go, okay? So everything the same way up until that quarter weight point. Now I change, boom, and then do something, okay? Up, change, boom. Up, change, boom, kick. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay, so you have to really focus and analyze how you do your regular techniques. Well, let's do one more. So let's say now I'm throwing my hook, right? My left hook. This is my full left hook, 100%. This is it right here. I go out wide and then I hit. So if I'm gonna go fake, I can't fake like this. He's not gonna buy it. And I see this all the time. People completely change their, their, uh, their when, they, when they fake, they change the way they, 
do their natural technique. Instead, instead of going here, I have to do this. See that? Up, boom, now I change and go with something else. Up, boom, now I change and go with something else. So I have to do that, this is my midway point right here. Yes, this is dangerous. I've, I've done this exact technique and I've gotten hit with a straight right. So again, you have to, uh, that rock me. So you have to know something about your opponent as well. You don't wanna do these, do a lot of these uh, dangerous fakes uh, in round one where you don't really know much about your uh, opponent, okay? So I've made mistakes like that as well, all right? So you have to be um, wary of when to use these uh, techniques. Okay, last one is timing. I'm sorry for talking so much, but I gotta get these out. So um, when I first went to Thailand, right? Uh, that was like the biggest eye opener because uh, I was still an amateur at that time. That was 2008. So, you know, obviously I'm training there and I would spar these guys and these guys were at, at, a, at a high level. They were at the elite level, the, my training partners that I was training with. They were fighting at the stadiums. So um, when I would be sparring them, I just, I, there was no way that I could block any of their, any of their techniques. And I just kept killing myself trying to think like, what is it about these guys that keep scoring these points on me? I would always be a split second late. I would bring up my leg here to block that kick. They're already in and they bring their leg out. Now they got, their, got that point off. So I kept thinking to myself, man, these guys are so fast, but it had nothing to do with speed. It was all about timing, okay? And, uh, break, and then breaking up the rhythm of that timing. And so, you know, everybody's heard that uh, term before, timing beats speed, okay? Then that's absolutely true. So I use this um, as the example. Uh, uh, everybody knows what the metronome, uh, what a metronome is for and what it does. It just creates a beat. So, you know, for musicians or whatever other case that you want it to, to create a beat for. So let's use that as our, as our basis, okay? In Muay Thai, in fighting in general, we all have some kind of a beat and rhythm that we fight at. For Muay Thai, generally speaking, you're always here, okay? You're going forward, backward, forward, backward. Uh, and the reason for that is because you're distributing your weight equally on both sides, 50-50, okay? So now I can block on both sides without a problem, okay? If I see a up left kick coming, up maybe another left kick, up right kick, I can always try to, I can easy, easily block those kicks in that stance. You know, there's obviously cases where you have fighters who are counter fighters who are just sitting on their back leg and tapping here, okay? You can do that as well. The timing for that is, is similar, but I'm just gonna use the uh, basic one where it's 50-50, okay? So let's now use our metronome example as that rhythm, okay? So forward, backward, forward, backward. So let's use a count, one, two, okay? We'll stick with that. So you have one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. We all have to fight on the first beat, okay? It's impossible for me to go here and then try to punch because all my weight is going backwards. So I always have to hit on the first beat, okay? So one, two, one, one, two, one. Always on that first beat. The trick now is because we all know um, subconsciously that we fight on that first beat, now we have to start breaking that rhythm up, okay? And this is where the ties kept scoring those points on me. So instead of fighting on that first beat, and instead of waiting to go on the relaxed state, because again, subconsciously when you're in there, you know as soon as the, your opponent is here, he can't fight anymore, okay? He's relaxing. As soon as he's here, you know that he's gonna attack. So we have to break it up and go somewhere in between, okay? So let, let me bring you real quick. So again, I'll use that right kick in, as an example. So instead of going on the first beat, one, two, one, I'm gonna go one, boom. Before I can even say two, I'm already hitting. So I'm going one, two, one, kick. Before my before that relaxed state reaches to, to that number two, I'm breaking up that rhythm in the middle and then going. Does that make sense or am I confusing everybody? All right, cool. So now you can use this for anything. Once you, once you learn this uh, system of, of fighting or for, t for timing, you can use it for anything. If you guys watch boxing, Boxers are really good at this timing as well. They use the same exact thing, especially Mayweather. When he shoots the uh, right hand out, he's, he's perfected that, okay? His heel usually goes up, and he'll just wait, boom, it just comes out. There's no beat, there's like no, none of this. It's just, bam, it just comes out, okay? So you guys can study that same style. So again, 
when we do the first drill, I want you guys to deliberately count inside your inside your uh, head and just count one, two, one, boom, and then you go. So as soon as you finish that second uh, first beat, right before you're about to say number two, you're already kicking. Okay. So the first drill, that's exactly what we're gonna practice. Just the uh, the back kick. So I want you guys to go one, two, one. The first one, you go on the first beat, just to, just to get that kick down, okay? Then the second time, one, two, one, boom. You go on right for that kick, okay? So as soon as you finish one, bam, explode into that kick, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, cool. So let's pair up, find a partner, somebody of uh, equal